Hi guys, so it's good to hear from time to time the Labour Party grasp the Brexit nettle and attempt to hold Boris Johnson and his government to account over it. Now you're going to hear in a moment from Paul Blumfield who's going to ask a, a very important question of the Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis about Northern Ireland of course and Brexit. Now it's important to remember and I've said this before Boris Johnson had three options when it came to Northern Ireland. Putting a border on the island of Ireland well, the consequences of that would have been, of course, to piss off the EU, the Irish government and the United States. It would have been the first step towards the breaching of the Northern Ireland, uh, the, the Good Friday Agreement from Northern in Northern Ireland. And of course, this would have pretty much ended his career as a politician. It would have brought down his administration. Now, the next option would be to keep the UK as a whole. Great Britain and Northern Ireland within the single market and the customs union. But that, of course, would have pissed off Brexiteers within his party. They would have worked to undermine him and eventually he probably would have lost his position and been kicked out. So he didn't want to go down that road either. So the last option, of course, was the road of least resistance in his eyes to put a border in the Irish Sea. What are the consequences of that? Well, he's going to piss off the DUP. He's going to piss off Unionists, he's going to piss off the loyalist paramilitaries. But these people have no power over him. They had power over Theresa May, but she's gone now and the DUP have no power over him because he has an 80-seat majority. So I think Boris Johnson, who's not a detailed person, probably looked at the options available to him and said, well, this one is going to get me over a bump in the road. This is going to get me out of a, out of a fix. Put the border in the Irish Sea. The unionists are going to complain, but I don't give a crap about those people. Speaker, as the Honourable Member for North Antrim has just said, the protocol is at the heart of this issue. Uh, the Secretary of State knows that there were only three options. All UK alignment with the customs union in the single market, a land border between North and South, or a border in the Irish Sea. The Prime Minister chose the sea border, but then he promised it would not involve the Czechs that he signed up to in the protocol. Either he didn't understand the agreement he signed, or he didn't care about telling the truth. Which was it? I think a bit of both. Boris Johnson didn't understand the withdrawal agreement or the protocol. And he probably thought, well, look, I don't understand the details of it. Let's just sell it. If the unions complain, we'll lie about it. We'll lie until the lie runs out. That seems to be his modus operandi. Uh, well, having outlined this earlier today, it's interesting that members of the opposite, uh, the bench opposite, continue to want to talk about nothing else other than uh, leave the EU. And, uh... <sighs> so the bench opposite, so he's criticising the Labour Party for talking about nothing else but leaving the EU. Brandon Lewis is trying to ignore the problem. And this is typical Tory behaviour. There's a problem. Ignore it. Let's start talking about something else. But I'm sorry, Brandon, you can't ignore your bloody job. This is your bloody job. You have to take responsibility for what's happening in Northern Ireland. You are the Northern Ireland Secretary. You're paid lots of money to do that job. Of course, you don't want to do that job, it seems. You want to talk about something else. I think that does highlight this lack of connection with the people who want to move forward. And as we have said, we want to make sure that this works for people in Northern Ireland. And I think it's very clear, one of the things we have said consistently in the Prime Minister outline, that the protocol itself is there for the unique circumstances of the situation in Northern Ireland. Notice he didn't respond to the actual question. Did Boris Johnson lie or did Boris Johnson not understand? Please answer the question, Brandon. Of course, he's not going to answer the question. He's a minister. Ministers don't answer the question. And this once again falls to the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House should say, I'm sorry, Minister, can you answer the question? Did Boris Johnson lie or did Boris Johnson not understand? It's there because it allows and recognises that you, you want to protect their single market. We respect that position. They want to, to protect their single market. That's about uh, protecting the EU for goods that are moving through Northern Ireland into the Republic of Ireland and therefore the EU. We are determined to ensure that we are delivering on all strands of the Good Friday Agreement, not just one of them as that um, would otherwise um, outline. And that means recognising, as the protocol itself says, um, and it's clear about, not only that it won't disrupt... I'm not sure why he's talking about the Northern Ireland, uh, sorry, the Good Friday Agreement here, because 
There's nothing in the Good Friday Agreement about a border in the Irish Sea. Now, there are numerous references to border a border on the island of Ireland and the idea of not <laughs> building infrastructure on that border. There's nothing in the Good Friday Agreement about bo a border in the Irish Sea. So I don't know why he's bringing up the Good Friday Agreement here. This is about the Northern Ireland Protocol. About the everyday lives of people in their communities, but that it will respect and uh, recognise the integral uh, market of the United Kingdom. And Northern Ireland is an integral and fixed part of the United Kingdom Customs uh, Territory. We are in determined to ensure they remain so and that we get those products moving freely. That doesn't mean that we we, we absolutely recognise the need and the desire for the EU to be, uh, make sure the goods moving into the EU via the public run are properly dealt with. But that is very different to having the amount of goods and the, cha the challenges that we are seeing for all goods moving to Northern, to Northern Ireland from Great Britain. Um, and as we've been clear, we will fix that. Um, does anyone actually understand what the hell he was saying there? Because I've uh, under, understood nothing. That was a word salad. The EU want to protect their single market. The question was not about that. We're going to make sure that the protocol is implemented. That There's nothing about that. There was nothing in regards to the border in the Irish Sea. There was nothing in regards to unionists. So, look, I'm not afraid for the protocol because there isn't the language, there isn't the rhetoric in the House of Commons from Boris Johnson, his government, or the likes of even Jacob Rees-Mogg. Now, Jacob Rees-Mogg is someone who will throw out ridiculous rhetoric, but I've noticed that not even he is willing to say that the protocol is going to be thrown in the bin. He hasn't ta attacked the protocol. Now, he can't attack the protocol, of course, because, well, he supported it. He campaigned for it. Remember, the protocol is part of the withdrawal agreement. The withdrawal agreement, aka the oven-ready deal, is what the <laughs> the Conservative Party used as a tool to win an 80-seat majority. So it's it would be logically insane, if such a thing exists, it would be insane for the Conservative Party to complain about the protocol because it's part of, as I said, part of the withdrawal agreement, which was the oven-ready deal. It would be basically Boris Johnson saying, I sold you an oven-ready deal, but part of it is blue-molded. I'm somewhat satisfied with the response, not from the, the language used, but he did not attack the protocol. I'm confident that he understands that the protocol is going to stay and he's not going to listen to the unionists. The unionists can go, um, you know, wherever they want, <laughs> they're not going to change the protocol. The protocol is something agreed by the British government and the European Union. In the same way that the Irish government can't do anything about the protocol because it's not involved. It's not their business. They are affected by it, but they, if they have a complaint about the protocol, they need to go to the European Union. In the same way, the unionists, if they have a problem with the protocol, they need to go and speak to Brandon Lewis. They need to speak to Boris Johnson. Now, just think about that for a moment. Do you think Boris Johnson or Brandon Lewis are going to listen to the likes of the DUP? Of course not. As I said before, they have no power. They have no influence. So the protocol is safe for now, unless Boris Johnson does some sort of U-turn and says, well, the oven-ready deal needs to be thrown in the bin. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?